Now, some of these sequences on the right you may have seen before. So I'm going to set a variable called x to being a string. And I'm hoping that at this point in second semester of third year university, you're familiar with that. Yeah, please, yeah. That's where somebody can get a, can say a joke to say, could you clarify that or something? And let's do something else. You might have seen this, and if you haven't seen it, no problems. What am I doing here? An F string means that a formatted string means that anything that's in a curly brace is evaluate this, turn it into a string, and pretend that the thing that was in the curly braces is the string that we were uh, manipulating. Technically, this is called interpolation. A programming language called Perl, which I have fond memories of, was one of the first languages to do this. And so if I, if I print out why, you should see that it comes up saying A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, that thing inside curly braces can be anything at all. It can be any kind of expression. So I'm going to do another one this time. Um, let's go Y. I'll print Y afterwards. <coughs> How about I say, tell me the length of x and so calculate the length of that string and you're going to get 3 turned into a string as if it had been in the string DEF. Yep. And just to sort of do some other weird stuff, it's an expression. We can put anything we like in here. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Um, yep, all, all good. Uh, if you're feeling really fancy, you can do other crazy things in here like you can put in format specifiers to say, look, it should begin with seven, I think I've got that right, seven zeros before it. And so it's taking the, the three and then formatting it. So we've got a colon there. Another one that I, I find myself using a lot is I might have something like, when I'm debugging something, I often find myself using this notation. So if you have a format string, and there's a, an equal sign at the end of the expression, then it prints out whatever this thing was in terms of value, but before the equal sign, it actually prints out what, what you had said. And so it makes it kind of easy to debug. Okay, let's tell me what the length of x is, and it prints that, prints that out. Really nice for logging and debugging. OK, so that is not super, super relevant to what I'm talking about, but it's kind of tangentially is. So Python has this idea of modifiers when you're introducing a string. And if you have been programming in Python probably around the time you were in primary school, you might have encountered something like this. I need to have a Unicode string. Here's where I'm going to rely on the one Chinese speaker because I can maybe get this right. Me. Oh, oops. Oh, there you go. To introduce that the following string is not an ASCII string, it's a Unicode string. And of course, that's going to print out um, everybody's favourite Chinese phrase. That was necessary in Python version 2, but in Python version 3, every string is assumed to be a U Unicode string, unless you specify a B before it, which I'll do in a moment. So that's going to do exactly the same thing, with or without the U, same thing. But if you're looking at some older code, you might be wondering what that U is. And the answer was, I want to store a Unicode encoded version of this. OK, next thing I need to talk about is a sequence of bytes. Just trying to think of a, a nice example of this. So I'm going to create another variable, we'll call it Z. And as it turns out, I'm just going to type in a sequence like this. And what I'm saying is, let me make it, make it the same as the x. So at this point, my x variable and my z variable, if I actually looked at the data that they're pointing to, 
it would look exactly the same. Why is that? Well, because even though this is a Unicode string, I'll talk about it later, but ASCII letters get encoded compactly. So that's three bytes long plus a null character at the end. And I have just created a three byte long byte string. There was no null at the end. Now there is a null at the end. And if I look at Z, it'll display it in a certain way. So what, what am I seeing here? I'm seeing the type of Z is bytes, whereas the type of X was a string. And it's bytes. Those bytes begin with the ASCII letter A, the ASCII, the ASCII letter B, the ASCII letter C, and then I couldn't show it to you, so I've given you the hexadecimal version of that next byte, which is backslash X, zero, zero. And zero, zero in hex is, of course, zero in anything, really, in decimal, any, any numbering system. Okay, and hold that thought. There is one other thing that goes on. Maybe I didn't actually want to say, like, the null character. I could have a situation where I wanted the same thing, but I actually genuinely meant that I want to have a backslash followed by a zero. And so there is the option of saying this is a r raw string, which means don't include any character translations. For example, you know, if I said hi backslash in there, you know what that's going to print? Two lines. If I said it's a raw string, then, okay, you want an H and I and a backslash and an in and then a there. Okay, everybody happy with that? Yep. So now let's start interacting between the string for version of things and the byte version of things. So I'm going to begin with my example on the slide there. So I've got a byte string that goes like this. X, so hexadecimal 5A. 5 is less than 8, so that tells you that this 5A must be less than 128. So it's actually an ASCII character in disguise. And there's another ASCII character in disguise. And so I now have an X variable that's when I display it as if it were ASCII, I'll get a Z and an at sign. And so if I, if I say I'd like to have that decoded as if it were ASCII, what I get back is the string Z at sign. What Python is doing here is it says, okay, you've given me this byte string. You've told me to interpret it as ASCII. I'll go through each byte in that byte string and work out what this would be in UTF-8, because everything in Python is UTF-8, and I've got that internally as UTF-8, so that if I now need to encode this in some way, I've got an option for doing so. I could also decode it as one code page 1252, Microsoft's disaster in the making, and since the bottom half of that was all the same as ASCII, it's still gonna work. Let's say I have a byte string. So my new byte string is, no, let's say I've got a string, ordinary string, Z at. Now I say, please encode that in ASCII format. And that gets me some bytes. If I say, please encode that as UTF-16, I will get another thing back. What did I get back there? Pulling it apart, I got a 255 character followed by a 254 character followed by a thing that is a Z and then a null and then an at sign and then a null. That's, that's UTF-16. Everything is at least two bytes long. Let's, um, let's take another one. Let's go this time. Character number... 93. If I say that byte, that set of bytes, please decode that as ASCII, I'll get some horrible error message saying, 
I was unable to turn this into Unicode via ASCII because there is no such ASCII character as 93 because 93 in decimal is, 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 is 147, which is bigger than 128, so couldn't possibly be a real ASCII string. But it could be that that binary sequence is a uh, code page 1252, and depending on how good the recording is and depending on how good the projection is, you might be able to see that that's the open double quotes character. I'm glad that everybody nodded there because it sort of, you know, at least it sort of looks like that from the back seats. Or I could do the same thing with ISO 8859-1 and it's a, it's a thing but we don't know what thing it is. And last one, uh, let's do UTF-16. It'll give you another error saying there's no way that that can possibly be the case. Anytime you're working with multilingual data, uh, you may well encounter this string. You can even encounter this in a perfectly normal English document because if somebody has encoded it and it's been encoded as code page 1252, for example, and you're opening it on something else and you assumed it was ASCII, bang, crash, kaboom. Uh, let's write another little program. I'm going to create a file. No, I'm going to read a file, and the file I'm going to read is an example because I can't think of anything better. You've probably seen opening a file like that, and you've probably seen additional arguments, like I want to read the file. You might have seen write the file. You might have seen write, read the file as a sequence of bytes. So if I say read it as text, I'm assuming things like that it has carriage returns and so I can split it line by line. Uh, I'm also assuming that it's got some encoding that I can use. If I open a file as bytes, that'll tell me, it'll just give me a, a byte stream. So pause for a second, let's do that one. If I do an F read of that, etc. password file as binary, actually if I try and read lines on it. Did you notice it just <coughs> gave me one big horrific blob? If I go back here and say it's text, I should get slightly different. We also have another couple of arguments that we can put here up on my slide there. So like how's the buffering done? Is it when I read something, am I reading a whole line? Am I reading one byte? Or is there no buffering at all, just read as is. And the important one is, what's the encoding of it? So if I say, read it as if it's ASCII. Sure, no problems. If I say, read it as if it's UTF-16, doesn't seem to be a problem yet until I try to read anything. And then as I'm reading it, it there's something wrong. This can't possibly be a legitimate file. Having said that, what I can do is I can say errors equals and then what should I do when I encounter an error? Ignore. And so if I read that, still got a problem. I'm missing the, yeah, the byte order mark at the beginning. So I need to have a different example file to make this one work. Okay, 10 seconds. I create my new file, f equals open temp foo.txt for writing and the encoding is going to be encoded in UTF-8 and I'm going to write a bunch of Chinese characters into it because why not? One, two, that's not what I planned on writing but that'll do. Done, f.close. Right, now if I try to open that file F dot open temp foo.txt. I want to open it for reading. If I say the encoding is ASCII, it'll fail. But if I try to say it's ASCII and the errors, I want you to just backslash replace them. 
then it's got that sequence of bytes in the file, and so that's how it's going to read those bytes out. So I've got my F file, I have written it in one encoding format, and down here where I'm reading it, <coughs> I didn't specify the encoding, so it defaults to UTF-8, and that fails. As you can see down here, defaulted to UTF-8. Can't figure out what's happening at byte position zero because the first thing it sees is 255, which happens to be the first character of every uh, UTF-16 file. It has to show which byte order it's stored in. Or here's another one where I've written it out as UTF-16, but then instead of declaring an encoding, I've said just give me the bytes of it. And so then when I read the resulting file back, what I get is not a string, I get that bytes, and you can see the actual bytes that were in that text there. With a bit of reading, you can actually sort of figure out what's going on there. The FF and then the FE, that's the, is this big endian or little endian? And then we have an H followed by a null, then an E followed by a null, then an L followed by a null, followed by an L followed by a null, and then kind of hard to read, but it, that's what it's saying. <coughs>